of the Natalie Vegetarian and today we're talking about leadership in your career. So leadership is a huge topic and I'm trying to split, make it specific to different types of audiences. So today's video is about people who are in employment and if you're working in like a team, one organization and a structure, how you can work on your own leadership skills and become a more effective leader. So the first thing I would say is always try and beat expectations. It's just about taking initiative really. Most people who are good leaders are not doing the bare minimum. Think about anyone you, you can admire or inspires you or a good leader you know, whether it's in your office or in a movie or a mentor or a colleague, they always go above and beyond expectations. It's a wonderful thing because it means you're taking initiative. You're doing more than is expected of you, which is more than the bare minimum, which is more than other people around you are thinking it's, it's possible, so you're always going to be impressive. You're always going to be like, oh wow, they even did this, or that report was done so well, or they went the extra mile and did this. It's memorable, it's admirable. People will look up to you and respect you, show that you're good at your job, you know what you're doing, you take it seriously. So you want to build that trust and respect in the way people feel about you in the workplace. And that's one of the first things about being a leader. People need to respect you, they need to trust you, they need to know you know what you're doing. It's not just about being the loudest person in the room or the one who asks the most questions or the most pushy one. It's about people truly believing in what you say and what you do. And the first way to do that is to lead by example. So make sure you're going above and beyond. You're meeting your deadlines, you're handling things on time, on the right quality, and you're going the extra mile. I'm not saying burn yourself out by putting in extra hours, because so many people spend so much time, but the quality of their work is not that much more. That's why it's so important to understand productivity and your own energy and your time management, so that you're being effective you're putting in quality over quantity. So lead by example and make sure you're beating expectations. Be that impressive person in your office, in your team. We can always count on Sally, man. She's so good at what she does. Or we can always count on Jacob because whenever we ask him for something, not only does he deliver it on time and properly, he always goes extra and even adds in bonus materials that make sure the project go further. So you have to see what you can do to be impressive, to beat the expectations that are put on you. Don't do the bare minimum. If your life is hard and it is stressful and you just need to tick the boxes and go home at five, no wahala, it's up to you. It won't be impressive in the office. Maybe you have other priorities right now, but a good way to be a leader and to show leadership in the workplace with your team is to beat expectations. Make sure that they trust and respect that you know what you are doing. The next step I would say is about listening. This is where emotional intelligence comes in. It's about knowing the people on your team, in your department, even in other departments. It's about making those genuine connections and actually understanding what people are going through, how they think, what their strengths and weaknesses are. Because then you can take initiative and you can be a leader to the team because you'll know, oh, Jacob is good at this, but Nyakato is good at that. Oh, John is good at this, but he struggles in this area. So when we're assigning people on the project, let me help him with this area and reassign this to someone else. Then he'll believe in you, he'll understand, he'll appreciate that effort you put in for him. And it helps you to be more effective in your work. If you know your team members really well, then you can achieve the goals of the company or the project, whatever you're working on, better. Because all human beings are different. We don't all need to be the same. No one is perfect. We'll have strengths and weaknesses. And it's about managing them, using your strengths and mitigating your weaknesses. If you know you're weak in something, don't volunteer for that project. If you know you're strong at it, say, I can handle that extra part. And as a leader in that workspace, it's helpful if you can back up people when they are volunteering, when they're saying, you know, when they have questions, because you know them, you understand them. When Jacob asks that question in the meeting, you know why, it's because his background is in finance. So when we're talking about a marketing project, he's not understanding why you would make these decisions. And so you can speak up because you have that insight. And that shows leadership. It shows you're taking initiative among the group. Even when things are difficult or challenging, you are the one who knows the people. This one has a hot temper. This one is very shy. This one is going to bring up this problem on Tuesday in the morning meeting. You know it. 
because you've taken time to get to know your team. You've listened to them, you understand them, you're making connections with them and understanding their personalities, their strengths and weaknesses, their goals, what's driving them, what's motivating them, what's stressing them, why are they not performing as they used to? Are they going through something in their personal life? Is there another colleague who is being difficult? It's up to you to take that initiative to understand people. And the better you understand them, the better the team can work. And the more they'll listen to you and your influence because they trust what you're saying. Because you've shown that you understand each of them and you know each of them and you're trying to make their lives better, the project better, to make sure the company is moving smoothly. So they will listen to your opinion and that gives you more influence, which is a leadership trait. The last thing I would say is courage. This is a hard one but it's something you can cultivate. It's just about practicing. Because to be a leader, you have to have courage. We can't all be scared together. Then nothing happens. There always has to be someone who's ready to speak up first. Someone who's ready to break the awkward silence. Someone who's ready to have the difficult conversation. And that is usually the leader of the team. It doesn't matter if you assign the leader, that's your role. Because sometimes in hierarchies, structures, Oh, whoever has been here the longest is the leader. Or whoever has the most technical experience is the leader. But they don't have leadership skills. Some people have more leadership skills because of the background they come from. Firstborns in big families just tend to know because they're used to being responsible for many other people. But it takes courage to be that person that speaks up, that defends the rest, that reads between the lines, that's not afraid to take that first step. And that's something you have to cultivate as a leader. Even someone who has natural leadership skills or who comes from a leadership background still practices that. Because I'm telling you, no matter how far you get, there's always a whole other level of fear and stress that is going to require more courage from you. So to practice that, you want to get it stronger because it's a skill. It's like a muscle in your body. You have to work it out and use it a lot and it will get stronger. It will get bigger. It will get used to doing harder things and it will become easier. So you have to cultivate courage. When you are nervous, when you don't know if anyone should ask this question, when the boss comes in in a rush and tells you, I need all of these things done in the next 24 hours, how would you do that? And everyone is just sitting there quietly like, what do we do? The person who speaks up is the one who is the leader. Well, actually, this is what happened. This is what is possible. I need to speak for my team because this is the situation we're in. It takes courage to do that. Because as human beings, we're all scared. No one wants to be embarrassed. No one wants to be shouted at. No one wants to take the blame. But that's what leadership means. It means you take responsibility. You take on that extra load, whether it's extra work or it's extra emotional labor. Because now it's up to you to cultivate your team, to motivate your team, to get things done. That takes courage. When there's a difficult person, who is going to be the one who goes and brokers peace? You are causing problems in the team. When there's a big challenge, who is going to go and tell the boss everything went wrong? We didn't get the license on time. We lost that bid. It takes courage. And you're not just born with courage. No one is. Some people have been thrown in many hard situations from when they're young, and they're just used to dealing with them because they have to. And those people have more courage when they're older, just naturally now, because they've worked on it even if they did it without realizing. But it doesn't mean you can't catch up. And even if you're those people, you can improve. You can be proactive, you can be intentional. When you feel that fear, you feel it even in your body, your stomach, in your chest, you're sweating. Just say it, just do it. Collect your thoughts, take a deep breath, and do what needs to be done. That takes courage. And that is something you will build and people will respect you for it and it will help you to move further ahead because you're doing things in front of the team, in front of your boss, your supervisor, your superiors, whether you're doing it in a public forum or even if it's a one-on-one -on -one meeting that's hard, you will be respected for taking that hard decision or making that difficult conversation happen between different people. And that's how other people will subconsciously start to see you as a leader. So when it comes time for who is getting the promotion, who should be in charge of this project, who can we turn to for this, it will be the person who has been speaking up, that person who has shown courage to their colleagues. Because not everyone can fight through that fear and step up. Courage is very hard to cultivate. And when it's not a priority to you, when you're not being intentional about it, there are other priorities in your life. Maybe you don't want to be the leader and that's okay. But all teams need a leader. Otherwise, there's too much chaos and nothing gets done. So if you can cultivate that courage, you will be seen as a leader and it will help you go further in your career because leaders are the ones who move forward faster.
because people can trust you people can count on you people know you have the company's interests at heart you have their backs you are reliable you are respected and that's how they can push you forward that's how they recommend you they promote you they speak about you when you're not there and that's why they'll take your career forward so i hope those three areas are helpful to you that's how i would suggest you improve your leadership in the workplace